dude, why are you so upset? You know, my girlfriend has been giving me the cold shoulder. Uh, the cold shoulder? Uh, you mean her shoulders are cold? No, see, we wanted to get married, but I think she's got cold feet. Her shoulders are cold and her feet are cold. Uh, does she have a heater at home? Uh, yes. Why? So, why are her feet and her shoulders cold? Oof. No, idiot. You must learn some idioms and slang words. Idioms? Slang? Okay, let's do it. Hello and welcome to another lesson. My name is Maddie from POC English and in this lesson we're going to learn some beautiful and useful American and British slang and idioms. First of all, let's begin with American slang and American idioms. Yesterday I had a test, but I wasn't prepared for it. So I screwed it up. I screwed it up. To screw up, what does it mean? To screw something up means to do something badly, to have a bad performance, to screw up. I had an exam yesterday and I screwed it up. I'm gonna fail. I screwed up. I'm a screw up. I'm a screw up. Screwing it up. Am I screwing it up? So don't screw up. You managed to screw up the screw up. You screwed up, man. You really screwed up. Here's one interesting American idiom. This is tooth and all of them together are teeth and this here is skin now do your teeth have skin no not really but here's an interesting idiom by the skin of your teeth by the skin of your teeth what does it mean if you do something by the skin of your teeth it means you barely do it you barely succeed in doing it it means it is successful, but by a very thin, narrow margin. What do you mean? What? Well, look at this example. He escaped from the secret police by the skin of his teeth. He escaped by the skin of his teeth. What does it mean? Did he get away? Yes, he did. But he was so close to being arrested by the police. He escaped by the skin of his teeth. He did it. But it was so close. By the skin of my teeth. Yours by the skin of our teeth. We can't do it anymore. Dude, we just escaped by the skin of our teeth. Seems you've passed by the skin of your teeth. You know what a potato is, right? It's a vegetable. Here, you can see it. Now, you also know what a couch is. This is a couch, something you sit on to usually watch some TV or to relax. Now, put the potato on the couch and you have a couch potato. What's a couch potato? This is a couch potato. A couch potato is someone who watches a lot of TV and who sits in front of the television for long hours and doesn't have an active lifestyle. That person is a couch potato. It can also be used to say that someone is lazy. John is a real couch potato. He's always watching TV and doing nothing useful. Listen, you couch potatoes. Look, I know I wasn't... Marrying a couch potato and human being is called a couch potato. What are you talking about, you corrupt couch potato? I have a friend. This friend of mine is very logical, very reasonable, and very friendly. She is down to earth. Down to earth? What does it mean? A down to earth person is a practical person, reasonable person, and friendly person. This person is not arrogant. This person is very friendly and very logical. She is down to earth. I'm down to earth. Cool, down to earth. Not this down to earth. Funny. Down to earth. Okay, back down to earth. She's down to earth and, uh, and mature. She's very down to earth. Right now I'm talking I'm back down to earth. The hours to come back down to earth. What's this? This is a shoulder, right? And it's really cold. This is a cold shoulder. What does it mean? The cold shoulder basically means an unfriendly attitude. Now, we usually use the verb give to give someone the cold shoulder. But what does it mean? It means to have an unfriendly attitude with someone. Someone is trying to be very friendly to you. That person tries to talk to you, tries to 
uh, ask you a couple of questions and then have a discussion, have a conversation going. But then you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You are giving that person the cold shoulder. He was really angry and gave me the cold shoulder. Careful. That's my cold shoulder. It's like a Del song, cold shoulder. Well, we're having cold shoulder. What's with the cold shoulder, Charlotte? It's the cold shoulder, stop. Now we talked about the cold shoulder. Let's talk about cold feet. If you get cold feet, does it mean your apartment is cold? <laughs> no, not really. To get cold feet means to suddenly become nervous about something you had planned earlier. I've had this plan of traveling to the US. I've booked my flight. But now I'm not sure if I want to go there because it's around seven, eight hours of flight and I'm a nervous flyer. So I've got cold feet. It means I'm feeling nervous about what I had planned to do. Lucy and I wanted to get married, but we've got cold feet. We're not sure if we're there yet. Are you getting cold feet? Everyone gets nervous. Everyone gets cold feet. Getting cold feet is very common. Sometimes men just get cold feet. Why are you getting cold feet? You getting cold feet, buddy? You getting cold feet? You're getting cold feet. And one more lovely American idiom here is to have a blast. Well, we had a party last night and we had a blast. What does it mean? To have a blast means to have a lot of fun, to do something that is a lot of fun, to have a blast. Last night we had a party. It was so fun we had a blast. I'm having a blast. Everyone's having a blast. They have to blast a hole. We're going to have a blast. We're having a blast. Why? He's having a blast. Yeah, I'm having a blast. Now it's time for a dialogue. Why are you so upset, dude? You know, my girlfriend has been giving me the cold shoulder. Did you screw anything up? No, I've been so down to earth in my relationship. What are you doing these days? <sighs> I'm a complete couch potato. I do nothing special. Oh, come on, dude. Whatever it is, I'm sure you'll work it out. You're gonna have a blast again together. I hope so. So far, we've talked about American slang and American idioms. Isn't it time to talk about some British slang and British idioms? Yes. But before that, let me tell you something. Do you want to have the summary of this lesson? All the slang and idioms with all their definitions, with some beautiful pictures, with example sentences in a PDF file and not just the summary of this lesson. Do you want to have the summary of all of my YouTube videos from day one in one book? Then you can download my ultimate English book and this book is for free. How can you get it? Simply click on the link here, the top of this video, go to my website, type in your name, your email address and click subscribe. You will receive the book in your inbox. Now let's get back to our lesson and let's talk about British slang and British idioms. I've recently moved to London. You can see from my new setup. Now I've been here for two weeks and I've heard this phrase a lot. I'm knackered. I'm knackered. What does it mean? It means I'm exhausted. I'm really tired. I'm knackered. After a long, busy day, I was knackered. It means I was really tired. Completely knackered. I'm completely knackered. I'm knackered. Hey, I'm positively knackered. <laughs> Jesus, I'm knackered. Another phrase I've heard a couple of times, I'm skint. To be skint, what does it mean? If you are skint, you're broke. It means you have no money specifically for a short period of time. Well, I've just paid my rent and I'm skint. I can't go for dinner. I am skint. I'll let you buy me one. I'm skint. Can you still owe me some money? I'm so skint right now. Now, here's a lovely idiom. To be quids in. If you are quids in, it means you have lots of quids. It means you are in a good financial situation to be quids in. For example, if this deal goes ahead, we will be quids in. It means we will be in a good financial situation. Another slang term is pants, but not pants that you wear, pants as an adjective. But what does it mean if something is pants? Well, this I can say is not very common, but it's good to learn it. If something is pants, it means it's rubbish. It has no quality or no value. It's pants. The film was pants, so I left the cinema. 
It was pants. It was of no quality, of no value. If you want to say that I promise, I'm not lying, you can say, I swear, I swear, I swear, I didn't do it. But here in the UK, I've heard this phrase, swear down. To swear down basically means to swear, to promise, not to lie, swear down. This is kind of British. I swear down, I didn't touch it. I swear down, I didn't touch it. Now I'm trying to have a British accent. It's not very genuine. I grew up with an American accent, so this is kind of maybe unnatural, but I tried to mimic it. I swear down, I didn't touch it. Was that any good? All right, and one last British idiom. This one is also very interesting. It can be very useful. To throw a spanner in the works. What's a spanner? A spanner is a tool. You can see it here. That's a spanner. Now, if you throw a spanner in the works, what does it mean? Imagine something is going well, but then you take a spanner and you throw it in the works. You ruin it. You stop something from being successful. You throw a spanner in the works. I had studied a lot for the test, but I threw a spanner in the works by arriving late. It means I ruined it. I arrived late. They didn't let me take the test. So I threw a spanner in the works. I ruined it. Now it's time to see another dialogue. Oh, why are you so knackered? You know, I was up all night studying for this test, but I overslept and missed it. I threw a spanner in the works. That's not good. Also, I've spent a lot of money on food and drinks. I'm skint right now, but I swear down, I won't do it again. I can lend you some money if you want. I'm quids in. Oh, thanks, mate. And that's it, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. Don't forget to practice and see you soon. Bye.